Bye. The realisation of the Premier League dream remains that to this day. A dream. Some Millwall fans like it like that. The modern day game has become so sanitised that most around the den do not and would not want it. The development of social media and of course YouTube is another area that not all fans are fond of. As Nick Hart very nicely puts it, it is a modern day fanzine. But not all fans see it that way and I completely understand and respect their opinions. But personally I'm a strong believer that if you don't move with the times, you'll get left behind. Our next guest is not only a modern day Newell fan, but he also happens to be one of the biggest YouTubers on the planet. He has over 5 million YouTube subscribers and as a founder member of the Sidemen, you can add another 8 million to that total. The Sidemen are global superstars and are the absolute top of the YouTube game. If you haven't guessed by now, our fourth and final guest is Josh Zerka. Josh Yo. Zerka, mate. Okay, this one. Yeah, well, was we? Yes. Do we still do that now? I don't what do know. YouTubers do? I don't know. So, obviously, as I've said, massive YouTuber, but more importantly, a Millwall fan. Indeed, indeed, indeed. How did that come about? Uh, that's just, I guess, both the same story as most Millwall fans. Like, my whole family, dad's side, is all Millwall. And so Millwall for me was like a childhood family thing. That was our family get together every Saturday or Tuesday night, come down Millwall, sit in block 16. Block 16, yeah? Yeah, then we, moved, we moved to the yeah. west side. Something must happen, must have got some more money. <laughs> I don't know what happened. First ever impressions of Millwall, first ever game, do you remember it? I think I had no very right memory of my first game. That's the one sad thing. I should have test my dad before and said like, oh, what's my first game? I don't know what my first game is. It must be like six or seven. Yeah. Or, young, or even younger. So what year would that have been? What sort of year do you remember from? My main season I remember is the season we got promoted into Division 1. Which would have been that game where we beat Oldham 5-0. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Reid scored the rocket. Yeah, and um, we got promoted at Wrexham. Yep. Yeah. And I went to Wrexham. I went to Wrexham as well, yeah. Well, well, we had a one all draw, yeah. had a weekend in Chester. You was probably a bit young for a weekend away at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been eight. <laughs> yeah, I remember everyone, well, nine. everyone was on the pitch after the game. Yeah, and that wasn't even a pitch invasion. That was, they, was opened, the, they opened the doors. Yeah, they did, they did. For the first time. So there's in like here, that is, for the yeah. 5-0. Normally, like we win saying, can we all go run on the pitch? I don't, but <laughs> just get that in. Yeah, yeah. very clear. I don't run on the pitch. <laughs> don't run on the pitch. It's bad. So the team then, God, that was a that was a, a very good first team to be around. Mm. The current gaffer Neil Harris, Stephen Reid, Paul Moody, Christoph Kinney, Tony Warner. Tony Warner will be watching. What do you remember? Players, what do you remember of, of Big Denzel? Because he, he, he will be seeing this. I remember it's Denzel Denzel Watson score. <laughs> and I was a goalie back then for like my under or whatever, like under nine team. Yeah. And then so that, he was like my idol, my hero. Like I want to be him because everyone idolised him in the ground. There's three years, obviously, I'm, I'm slightly older than you. There's three years that stick out to me in my Millwall lifetime, and that definitely is one of them. It's just a brilliant time to be around the club. For me personally, it was a bit older. I used to be a, the players would go out on nights out. We spoke about Bexley Heath and that earlier. The player was always out and about. And it just seemed to be a very good camaraderie, which for me, Neil Harris is trying to trying to rebuild now, but. I feel like that's old school football though. Yeah. I feel like because if you like if you go back and listen to all these like, old footballers, like oh you used to go out drinking all the time, and it's like now you're athletes, it's different. You exactly. Really... I, I actually covered that earlier on in documentaries. Exactly, the drinking culture has gone completely out of football, and it's not a bad thing. But at the same time, I think change rooms can suffer. And, and uh, they have to now around. they should share some hummus now, and it'd be great. <laughs> Or like say along those lines. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A bit of hummus and a bit of yoga and bit stuff. Of protein like. shake. Yeah, it is. Um, it is a shame. But back they were proper players. Proper mm. kit that year as well. The all white home kit. Yeah, is that like the Giorgio yeah, one? Yeah, you got it. You got <laughs> yeah. it. That was. Was that our home kit? That was our home kit. And people it was white. say. Um, people say now. Uh, I see debates all the time. Should we? What? Should we have the stripes? Should we have the blue? And people say, no, we're blue. It's got to be this blue. But people seem to forget that that season. Why was it, why was it white? Well. I don't know. I can't remember. It was. Um, it's like it's like is it like a, a, commem a commemorative? That's the word. Got it. Let's put my teeth in a bit. A commemorative. A commemorative kit. Yeah. So you remember those times? Remember being in the say you being in the East Stand, and then you transferred to the West. What other memories you got from from Millwall? Being a team's players, your favourite. Who was your all-time favourite player? I know Tim Cahill. Yeah. I just feel like we have to go. I recently found out this week that his sons are fans of us. Oh really? Yeah, he, he DM'd me on Instagram and I was like, hang on, what? Tim Gale? He was like, I could send My you My childhood a... hero. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a side men shirt if you send me a, a signed Kale one. That's a good trade off, I should do yeah, that. You should do that. Yeah, no, he, came, yeah. he came back then, we'll get on to him coming back later on in, in, the, uh, in the interview. But yeah, Tim Gale, your favourite player? I think there's a player like Kevin Muscat. Nutter. I feel like because so that I, I went to be a right back. I feel like I had to idolise any player in my position. <laughs> so he was like, he was our right back, and I was like, you know what? I only came in Muscat, so I'm just going to go through players at the age of 11. 
or 12. Go notes to nose with people who start getting in their face yeah, he, on Sunday. Nutter. I think that's why I loved him. Yeah, he was, I always regard him as a short-term legend at the club. He wasn't here long. How long was he here, by a year? Two, two years, I think, I think he played about 60, 70 games for me all, but right, there's, there's a very, um, there's a very famous photo, I'll show it now on the screen, it's just of, um, we played Liverpool, I think it was in a League Cup or pre-season friendly, and he literally looks like he's going to bite Milan Barish's nose off. He's just, that, that's here, right? Yeah. You we lose 3-0? Something like that. I, yeah. I think that's in the League Cup. The results Cup. are important. That's the in the League Cup. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was a League Cup. What we took from that is the photo of Muscat. He was just raging, and that's just everything that Millwall player epitomised, you know, and that's what we've tried to that's capture. We need one of those players again. We do. That's what we've tried to capture in this in this documentary. Speak to the players. Like, you know, what would you describe a typical Millwall player to be? Kevin Muscat. Cut. <laughs> 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 uh, was that the draw when you know your, you said your dad first brought you down here? Was that the draw to you as a, as a youngster coming down here and seeing these? It's passion. It's passion. Like, like um, we're all fan base. You know, obviously, like we can be passionate, and sometimes it goes wrong. We go too passionate. But all we ever want from players, no matter how good you are, I mean, look at Jimmy Abdu. As long as you're passionate and you get involved, you get, you just get into a tackle. Yeah. It's one way to get into like a middle fan's heart. Just crunch someone. That's <laughs> exactly right. And that's it. Like, play for team passion, gives 110%, regardless of if we're winning or losing. <laughs> And that's all I want to see or expect from a player. But you, you got your first era. I was yeah, I think, lucky. I think I'm, I'm very lucky with mine. My first era was Tony Cascarino, Teddy Sheridan. Yeah, yeah, so you were and very you lucky. And you sort of, yeah, I was very lucky. And, and you're in the same boat. Obviously, our all-time top scorer would have been yeah. firing. Then there's a picture of him in the alley just over there. Go on, Neil, Neil Harris. Harris. Mm. Would you remember Harris? I remember going on a, on a long, long walk with my dad. For, for Neil, when he had cancer, when he had physically cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember doing the walk. Right. Well, I don't know what game it was. I remember like a Norwich game or something. Right. Yeah, but then other than that, like yeah, just an incredible striker, someone who epitomises me a wall, puts in effort, but then he's cheeky, but he gets us corners out of nowhere, keep ball against people. It's like he's yeah, a he smart wasn't, player. He wasn't he wasn't the target man obviously and he, he wasn't super quick either, so he was I've not seen that I don't know, it's, it's like a weird player. Yeah, I'd agree, I know what you mean. It's like a really strange style because he was smart in weird ways in the way that he'd play the game. He was a good gamesman, I guess. Yeah. He could like get us a corner. Clever could, with it. What do people say if, if it ever comes up in conversation, football comes up, and you say, I'm a Millwall fan? What sort of reaction do you get to that? <laughs> Every time, it's like, oh, what was it? why? <laughs> he was a nice boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is it. Like, you're way too nice to be a Millwall fan. Uh, it, it, I don't know. A lot of people like it, I think. Yeah. Because it's people I like. I mean, I always say, like, I love an underdog, underdog anyway. I think people view Millwall as, like, oh, it's an underdog team. But I think everyone hates Millwall. They like us at the same time. Yeah, uh, because we're a team that we still have our... Like, we're still, what's the word? We still have our authenticity. Yeah. We're still exactly who we were 20 years ago, which exactly. a lot of clubs aren't anymore. No, it's on. So now it's this hard balance of, do you want to keep chasing getting higher in championship or do you want to stay where we are and just... Well, a lot of that, you... And we're at that bit now, we're at yeah. that crux point now. Yeah, you are, you know, it's took me back a bit to be honest because I'm watching this and you, re, like, I'm, you are, really are a Mill fan. It's not smart. Yeah. No, but you, yeah, yeah. no, but you fully understand and are involved with it. You're not just one of these people. Go, oh, I'm a Millwall fan, but no, 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 yeah, uh, no, like I, the kids like, in between us. Never, you know, he's never there. Do you know I, what I, mean? I like. <laughs> I only stop. I don't. I don't come as often now. Yeah. Um, Due to work. Yeah, and that's simply yeah. The 2004 FA Cup run. Yeah, yeah. That that's like that was like, that's next sticking point memory for me. I think like that semi final, at uh, Old Trafford yeah. in Sunderland, that Tim Cahill goal. Limbs. <laughs> yeah, no, it was with a little bit of a deflection. I was right behind that Kale going. I think I thought he controlled it well. When he did, we saw it deflected off the thing. And I just remember going to the FA Cup semi-final, thinking, "This is this. We've got this far. That's impossible. We're never going to get to play Man United." And when we did, yeah, as a kid, that was when I had that. Like, and then, like, I'm watching me on, like, also watching Cristiano Ronaldo at the same time. Like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> poor, poor old Robbie Ryan that day got turned inside out. Didn't he? Bless him. But and he also got his legs broken yeah. Ronaldo that day. I oh, know. Yeah. Ronaldo scored. Didn't he? Do you remember Ronaldo scored and sort of run towards our fans? Yeah, I was in front of us. Yeah, and yeah. People were trying. Someone tried to get, get up and get him. <laughs> but yeah, the coming. I, as a 24-year-old, I, I was kept thinking this, this can't be real. This cup run. That year, so that year is what? That's we played Tranmere, right? We played Tranmere here. We played Tranmere here, and Drew, and went to them. And that's where Harris scores out the chest and volley. That's it, left foot. Because I, I came here and I had the bloody, I had a bloody like, Mohican, blue and white, and the face <laughs> paint. <laughs> I'm <was> young. <laughs> oh dear. I was, yeah. I was, I was wrecking my colours. I think Muscat missed the penalty here. Their yeah, goalkeeper yeah, yeah. saved it, tipped it over, and that's what took us to the replay. Oh, bloody Muscat, hate him. <laughs> The FA Cup final. What's your, what's your memories of the FA Cup final? I mean, yeah, I'll tell you. I mean, for us, it was just a great day out. I don't, no one even cared about that because I think we no. all knew. Yeah. It, like it was like it was waiting. It was like okay, the toxic, the the time's ticking. We're getting there. We're getting closer and closer. 
and it's gone. Okay, it's over. Let's just enjoy the day. Yeah, well, I, I remember seeing um, billboards around at the time. It's a picture of Dennis Wise, and it's like the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And I did get sucked in a little bit of that. You, you make like a song. We did. We did do it. That's actually on YouTube. I might um, click that up. But it's like Theo for Fetus, like <laughs> miming at the start. Theo, <laughs> Fetus. Theo for Fetus. But Dennis Wise as a manager. I know he was young. He gets yes, a lot of grief, but I liked him. I don't, that's the thing, so I, like, I feel like there's a blur. I remember like liking him and suddenly I was told to not like him. Yeah. And I don't know where... Well, I, Is that doing money, right? Did he like... I don't... I mean, I think he was ambitious. compensation or something? Yeah, I think, but I think... Well, before he left, I think he was ambitious and he wanted to take us to the next level, but... He was working at one point. I thought he was a good manager. I thought, I thought he was a perfect fit for me or what? Other managers that stick out for you a long Mark time? Mark McGee. I love McGee. I think, yeah, that would cheer up Mark McGee. Cheer up Mark McGee, yeah. Um, believer. I feel like then it's just Kenny Jacket after that. I feel like that's the two, like... Kenny, yeah, Kenny was obviously... We had that period which was, like, managers galore. Yeah. Just like, okay, no, see you later, few, yeah. see you later. And then we, we got it right with Kenny. King Kenny. What other games, like, have you got anything you can stick out to you, like you just said? So I'm trying to think of... Something obscure. I feel like, I feel like a lot of... Brixham, lot... Brixham Way's not a bad one, but that's yeah. the end of the season, wasn't it? I feel like we did Sheffield United away. And that was a mascot. I remember that, I remember that one just because I was a mascot. They did Leighton Orient away and I was a mascot. I remember that one. Um, I think it's like, there's loads of like Forest away days that were great. And then loads of, uh, one that sticks out in my mind is a QPR away night on a Tuesday night. And it was just coins galore. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember like being excited that I got like 11 quid. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was staying after like picking it all up. Oh dear. Yeah, you know, QPR's, you know, game, QPR's always an event for one. What game really stands out for me is Mill Birmingham playoff uh, semi final here where Stern John like scores that 90 second minute or whatever. Yeah. And then yeah. ambush out here. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that yeah, one? That was a, that was a, that was a painful night in the club's history. The away the um, the away leg was very good. When we went up there we drew one all Dion Dublin scored a late equaliser. Yeah, actually, Dublin. actually a photo of me in, in the south on the pressing that one. Good old but Dion Dublin. Good old right. Dion Dublin. He was another one, Dion Dublin. I think that season we had Paul Moody, Neil Harris, Dion Dublin and Steve Claridge all around it. No wonder we've, we've just got done well. Yeah. With Stephen Reid. And then you go down the years and like, we had Paul Huberts. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan Meyerhofer. We had some... You, come on, let's get on to them then. Some bad players, some bad, no, bad no, players. No player is a bad player, but I loved him. Um, Abu Fafana. Yeah. Because he was rapid. Yeah. Abu's a beast of my feet, but that's the, that was the key for me. <laughs> get him, he's only 60 rated, but can the boy run? Yeah, yeah. Um, who else? Yes, we've had some awful ones though. Yeah, we definitely have. I try to get some awful players we've had. Adrian Sirio just had a good throw. Yeah, do you remember Sirio? He yeah. come with Josh Simpson, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the Canadian, Canadians. Yeah. Canadian invasion. And I remember their debut. I'm sure we played Leicester at home and, and he had he looked like the next big thing. Did your dad still go? Do you still go? What's your, uh, what's your aspirations and hopes going forward? I think half my family still go, but not as many of them. Kind of all like, slow dribbled out a little bit. I think mean, that's just family issues though. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with me wall. Yeah. Um, aspirations to me a wall now. Yeah. Just to, I think just to just solidify championship status really. Yeah. And let's just stay here and just get some more money into the club, but still try and keep who we are. Husky have just walked up. And you're exactly right. Get some money into the club, but retain our... But that's a hard thing to do. Yeah, it is. It but they are actually. So I know this um, Swedish news where they're from. But they are apparently like, very much love the club and want, want the best for the club moving forward. So it could happen. But then it's like so. Then but we could get a lot of money. But then this day and age, in like ten years' time, championship maybe be like thirty million a player. Mm. You know, like the way championship is going. Oh, it's, it's, it's going to be like, it's some of, huge. Some of the money in the championship. Some of the players in the championship and clubs. We're going to run out, like... There's no Adrian Siri who's left no more. We're going to run out of clubs in the championship that haven't got parachute payments. That's what we're going to do. That could, that, could, that could definitely, definitely happen. But I think you're right what you said, that people... If we finish mid-table, fantastic. Hats off to the manager. Obviously, due to the season we had, first season back oh, in yeah, the championship, yeah. last year... Last year, the season we had finishing one, two places above the relegation zone. That's the, that's the season we should have had in the first season back in the yeah, championship. That's what you'd expected, yeah. And there was a lot of angry people around, a lot of fans not happy with the way we played football, but... If they have had that season, the first season back in the champ, no one would have said anything. Because we overachieved, I think the fans' level of expectancy was a lot higher. Yeah. I don't know things. I feel like, I feel like if we, I don't feel like we could, if we, if we get to Premiership ever, would that be a good thing or a bad thing? I can't tell you how I'm Because imagine like, the way all Chelsea team yeah. West Ham would be great. <laughs> I was not just thinking that, but also obviously, like we said earlier, Mill would have always retained their authenticity. and. 
would there be hot dogs? Would there be happy clapping? And, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, I mean, it just wouldn't wash at me all. It wouldn't wash. I think it if we went up, I it think it'd be for a, for a season, and I think we get relegated. Cause a bit of havoc. Then am I ruin us? A lot of Sunday morning kickoffs at 11 o'clock. That might break us though, getting threatened and coming down. We get the parachute payments, but then we probably have bought all these players that we're going to spend tons of money on wages, and then we can't afford it anymore. I think, well, again, and, and people who criticise me for not spending enough, I think we've done things the right way, and I think exactly what you just said. You've seen teams like Hull go up. You've seen teams like Middlesbrough go up, spend all the money, come down, end up skin. And still, it's not still, the right way. Still spending money now. Yeah, exactly. I don't know where to get it from, but uh, it's, it's maybe not always the way to go. Do it slowly, softly. Do it the right way. I think I'm happy to be in a championship club. I yeah, don't know. I, I, it's, it's, I it's, it's kind of a weird thing to say. What, but would you, what bracket would you put Mill in if you, if you had to describe Mill? I think we do. We do. We just a passionate team, a team that like yeah. give you give our all. We're not be the most skillful bunch and have the most money, but we're passionate. Both fans and players are passionate about the club, and that's. That's what we are, really. Absolutely spot on, mate. I really appreciate your time today. Good no man. Worries, thank you. I'll catch you soon on YouTube and all. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, unfortunately that is a wrap. I gave myself 12 weeks to pull this documentary off and in hindsight, I could have given myself at least double. There'll be some things I've missed out, some big things, and we all know what they are. I'm going to play you out with Let Them Come to wrap things up for one. But I've just run out of time. I may do a part two at one point, I may not. You also may have seen in the documentary a few wardrobe malfunctions and some things that weren't quite right, and I'm sure you'll pull me up in the comments if you know more than I do. But if you know more than I do, you're a better man than I am because or woman, this has been a slog. But I'm not looking for anyone to get any violins out or to give me a medal. I just want you all to know that I gave this my absolute everything for the football club that we love. It is a strange one. 11 men kicking a ball around the pitch can be life-changing. For me personally, and I'm sure for many others, it has dragged me back from the brink on many levels, many a time, and, and just seems to be the constant that you can always go back to. A love for a football club will never die. That's enough from me. It's now time to hand over to the current team and the current squad under Neil Harris. All the best for the season, boys. It's time to rewrite the history books for yourselves once more and add a few more chapters to this wonderful football club. I'll see you at the Den Saturday if you're going. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Come on, you Lions. The best team in London, no, oh, the best team of all. Everybody knows us, we're called Mill Wall. Oh, let them come, let them come, let them come. Let them all come down to the dam.